Hey, Tony Caridi here from Avid at Music Mess 2013. I'm the marketing director for audio and really excited to show you Pro Tools 11. We just announced this a few days ago and um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. So, Pro Tools 11 is a new standard in audio production. It is completely rewritten from the ground up. Um, core to Pro Tools 11 is a brand new Avid audio engine. Uh, of course, it's 64-bit. Actually, everything in the, in the program has been rewritten in, uh, for 64-bit architecture. Every, nothing has, no stone has been left unturned. Um, and Avid Audio Engine is going to deliver customers incredible uh, boost in performance, an exponential jump in performance compared to um, uh, Pro Tools 10 or anything prior. So did you use the opportunity to go to 64-bit to kind of do a lot of other stuff? We did. In fact, if, you know, if, if the goal was simply to deliver 64-bit performance or 64-bit architecture, uh, we could do that because in and of itself, 64-bit is merely going to provide more accessible RAM for the application. Um, which is great, you know, for, for customers, for composers who are using uh, sample, uh, sample libraries that take up a lot of RAM. Of course, the system's going to run a lot better and a lot more, um, uh, you know, agilely and, and smoothly. I guess you could segment the memory more effectively and have it do separate things. I mean, I guess that's the way you do with 64 bit. Yeah, you can. And you, you know, and you can load up the computer with, with RAM. So, you know, not only can you, um, as the as that Pro Tools needs more RAM, because let's say you load up a structure or you load up one of the Air instruments um, that has a big sample library associated with it, or something by Synthogy like the Ivory plugins that use an enormous amount of RAM, um, well, Pro Tools was, will just kind of dynamically take the RAM as it needs it, which is really great. And there's no longer this ceiling of just a couple gigs of RAM. So now, you know, you load something up with 16 or 32 gigs of RAM, and uh, you're going to be flying. So now you just got away from all the plugin manufacturers to go stick to Corbett truly, I suppose. We, well, we, uh, yes, yeah, so with Pro Tools 11, um, it's a hard cutoff. You have to use AAX plugins. Uh, our task isn't supported. Pro Tools 10, as you probably remember, served as a bridge between um, TDM, our task, and then the new AAX platform. Um, so we gave developers and customers uh, roughly 18 months to make that transition. And in fact, the developers were, were briefed roughly a year before that. So the developers have had the SDK for two and a half years, roughly now. Um, so at this point, what we need to do is uh, get the AAX plugins into kind of the version two format, which is the 64-bit versions of the AAX plugins. So yeah, so the, those plugins are, um, and we're in really great shape. I mean, if you go to the main stage and, and take a look at our uh, at our at our demonstration there, or the demonstration that we recorded in Las Vegas, that'll be available online shortly. You'll see there's an enormous amount of uh, instrument plugins, an enormous amount of third-party uh, EQ, dynamics, uh, modulation, reverb, the whole bit. So will the kind of just regular 32-bit AAX plugins run in the 64-bit environment anyway, or do they they need to be recoded? What they need to do is be recompiled, and it's a uh, it's so if a if if developers ported their plugins over to AAX um, and they're currently on AAX working on Pro Tools 10, the vast majority of the work is done. So now they have to recompile uh, to 64-bit, um, and uh, yeah, so so like I said, we're in really good shape. There's a ton of plugins that are uh, ready, kind of working and ready now, and there's going to be an enormous amount ready at launch. And if you want to keep an eye on the Avid, uh, Avid website, go to avid.com forward slash plugins. There's going to be a really easy way to keep an eye on what plugins are available for the 64-bit AX platform. So let's take a look at some of the features, right? Excellent. Yeah, so um, core to the uh, to the upgrade again is the, the, the new Avid audio engine, which is just so much better at um, and efficient at handling multi-core. So if you pull up the, um, the system usage, um, and when you're playing down, this is a this is a, a small MacBook Pro with four cores. The um, CPU usage is much more um, it's much more predictable. So you're not going to see these spikes and have kind of these uh, you know be surprised that you're you know it seemed like the CPU was kind of able to handle your session, and all of a sudden it doesn't. Um, so it's just better at, at multi-threading. So the new audio engine is kind of better at also looking ahead and seeing what's coming and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, so, so it's really got three advantages. One of them is just that it's better at multi-threading. The second one is the dynamic host uh, plugin processing. So it intelligently kind of looks at what you're doing in your session, it looks at your timeline, and if there's no audio running through a particular plugin, it says, all right, we don't need this power here, let's allocate it here. So, you know, if you look at your, many times if you look at a session, um, 
you look at a Pro Tools session, uh, there's not going to be all audio all the time. So in a space like this, you know, all of the uh, plugins that are available, that are being processed, or that's a MIDI track, I'm sorry, all the plugins that are being processed on these audio tracks, um, they're going to be taken, you know, the, the power is not going to be dedicated there. It's going to be dedicated somewhere else. So it really maximizes what you're doing. But the third thing that, 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 that comes with the new Avid audio engine is um, this new kind of buffer setup, which is really excellent. So in previous versions, customers were really used to having to trade off um, good plug-in performance when they turned up their buffer with low latency when they wanted to record. So any singer knows when they put their headphones on and they got the mic out and they want to record, the last thing they want to hear is this delay in their headphones. It's really irritating and it can really kind of hurt the kind of performance that they're going to be able to deliver. So they want you know lo low latency or you know as close to no latency. Um, so, but when you're building up your session, a lot of times you're loading on the plugins, the mix gets bigger, and then the more you do that, the, the higher the buffer has to go because the computer needs the power that needs the more of a buffer in order to process all those plugins. Well, what we've done in this in this version is we've created a that's the wrong window. We've created a. Um, a different playback buffer size. So the hardware buffer size that you see now, um, that's currently set to 10,024, 10, we could set this very, very low, 64, sometimes even 32 samples, and that input buffer is dedicated just to the input channels. In the background, the playback buffer for all those other tracks, um, it's set to a really high buffer. It's actually dynamic. So if the computer finds it needs more power, it'll go up to you know 1,024. It could go even higher if the computer is working really hard. But anytime you record on a track, for the input channels, you're down to 64, maybe 32 samples. Oh, so it's got like a separate record path through the buffer, so it can't yeah, it's like a, it's like a dedicated uh, dedicated buffer just for your input channels. So it's really really helpful. So again, on on the same machine you're running today, you take those three comp those three aspects of the new Avid Audio Engine, and it's going to really give you an exponential jump in what you in in, in terms of the experience, in terms of the processing power you have today. Um, Another huge thing that comes with the Avid Audio Engine is offline bounce. This is a huge request from our users for a long time. Um, but you know, we didn't want to. We we knew we couldn't deliver an offline bounce that was not going to be completely identical. That was not going to yield identical results to online bounce um, because our customers, especially you know higher end pro customers, they're really going to they're they're going to require um, something that is totally predictable and they can totally count on. So one of the things we had to do was build in automation that was time stamped to the regions, or to the clips rather. Um, so now what that means is when we do an offline bounce, it's totally predictable, it's identical to what uh, to the results you get when you do an online bounce. And we put, you know, I think for roughly two months, 24-7, we were at this kind of automated script going. We were constantly bouncing down sessions um, in real time and you know, in faster than real time and comparing them and trying to see if they were phase cancellation and we're yielding identical results. So we're really, really excited to, to deliver this functionality. I noticed back here on the backdrop, I can see these gain reduction meters as well. Like... That's right, yeah. So the metering has been completely updated in Pro Tools HD. Um, this, is, this is specific to the Pro Tools HD software. Um, and there's a number of metering options. Uh, first and foremost, the meters are roughly 30% taller than what you have in prior versions. So we're kind of giving more real estate to it so, so folks can get better feedback and they can kind of keep an eye on that dynamic uh, material going on in their, on their channels. Um, and we built in seven different, 17 different metering types and ballistics in here. So if you are in broadcast and you have to keep uh, adhere by certain uh, broadcast specifications and standards. Uh, we've got um, a number of the PPM standards built into there. We also have VU, uh, VU Digital, um, Linear. We also have the K standard metering, which is really excellent for uh, for music customers that want to, you know, get a make sure that they're they have uh, ample headroom, but they're getting you know solid solid levels in there. Um, and also, as you mentioned, there's an option for gain reduction. So when you're seeing gain reduction, you have a, a couple different options for showing, you know, just the compressor limiter, um, just expander gates, um, and what it does, it will, you know, in many cases, a, it, someone will put on more than one dynamics processor. You know, maybe it's a gate plus a plus a compressor. Sometimes it's maybe it's more than one compressor. It's not totally uncommon for folks to run in line more than one compressor. So what this will report is the sum of all of those dynamic processes. It'll add them together, and that's what you're seeing here. Um, 
So you get these really beautiful metering ballistics um, where you see peak and average at the same time here. Um, and then you also have the opportunity, if you really want to get tweaky or if you have some, some uh, really custom requirements, you can get in, in there and totally customize your own ballistics. So is it fair to say that the much of the um, the work has gone is, is, is sort of behind the scenes for improvement of efficiency and uh, rather than it's, it's totally behind the scenes. I mean, obviously the metering's not behind the scenes. That, that's going to give you a lot, of, a lot of feedback. But I mean, a lot of this has to do with simplifying the experience for the customer, giving them more power so that they can just focus on being creative. Um, but yeah, a lot of this work was behind the scenes. Another thing I didn't mention is, so the Avid audio engine is brand new. Uh, we've also taken the opportunity to take the same video engine that's in the Avid Media Composer system we brought that and put that into Pro Tools. So what that means is now Pro Tools can play back HD video right you know, in the timeline without having to do any transcoding. It also means it doesn't just have to be QuickTime or Avid DNX HD. It can be any Avid uh, video, any video that Avid supports through AMA, which means it could be P2, it could be XD Cam, it could be any number of um, HD video standards without having to do any transcoding, any flattening. If it'll play in Media Composer, it'll play in Pro Tools. So those guys that are working, you know, um, they're collaborating between video editors and um, you know the audio post guys. They, they're, 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 it's just super easy. They just pull the stuff over, and, and there's no you, wait. Can you read that video out to separate devices and all that kind of stuff? So, on to devices. And you totally can, um, because it's the Avid Video Engine. It supports the Open I/O that Media Composer does. So there's a number of devices that have been approved by Blackmagic, um, 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 and a number of other companies. Yeah. Oh, well, that's cool. Excellent. So um, it's announced. So what are the, what are the yeah. facts and figures in um, ETA and that kind of stuff? So uh, available later this quarter. Uh, pricing uh, for for the new software is the same. It's uh, in U.S. dollars is six ninety nine, brand new. The upgrade price is two ninety nine for customers coming from Pro Tools 10 to go to Pro Tools 11. That's U.S. dollars again. If you're coming from Pro Tools 9 to go to 11, it is uh, 3.99. If you're coming from Pro Tools Express or Pro Tools LE, it's $4.99. Uh, and if you're an HD customer going from 10 to 11, it is $5.99. That's impressive. No cheat sheet either, that's good <laughs> stuff. So, I've, I've, I mean, because a lot of people have been are, living and breathing this for a little while. Of, lots of people are sort of paused at eight or nine and just kind of, they've still got systems that do that. Do you think this is going to entice them to move over? I mean, because it's quite a. What a leap for a lot of people. It's a huge leap. Is, so when we, uh, so for HD customers, this is um, this is kind of the end of the line. With with Pro Tools 10, uh, we announced that that was going to be the last major version to support the Pro Tools HD hardware. Um, and we, you know, pr we really wanted to give customers the time to plan their investment because we understand it's it's a sizable investment. To, to upgrade the I.O., to upgrade the cards. Um, it's probably going to come along with a computer upgrade for, for a lot of facilities and, and, and customers. So, so they've had you know, roughly um, you know, a year and a half now to plan this upgrade. Um, obviously, we're not cutting off support for Pro Tools 10, so that remains a viable solution for them. Um, but yeah, we think that between the performance, the metering, uh, the offline bounce, um, the video engine, um, you know, a number of other workflows that we didn't even get into here. Uh, yeah, we think that's, you know, it's a really compelling reason to go over to Pro Tools HDX for those customers because anyone that upgrades their HD systems now to HDX, uh, the Pro Tools HD 11 upgrade, you know, software will come with it. Um, so yeah, you know, we've talked to a lot of folks here at the show today and we've talked to a lot of folks online and uh, it's, uh, they've reinforced that it is a compelling solution, so we're really happy to see that. So some of these features we've seen are in HD only. What are the, what are the benefits if you're not at HD level? Uh, so everything we talked about is uh, for both the HD version and the non-HD version, except for the metering. Um, so the metering uh, ballistics and the, the gain reduction that we looked at a minute ago, that's an HD only feature. Uh, there are some metering improvements that are, are available for both the HD software and non-HD software. So, for instance, the height of the meters, that, that's been updated on both. Um, also, the metering um, in the, uh, the state plates of the sends and also the, uh, the inserts, 
um, that's available in the HD version and the non-HD version. So you're getting you know much more visual feedback across the board. Uh, you know you're also able to now see an expanded sends view of more than more than one or two sends. So you can show you know ten sends all in their expanded view. Uh, but yeah, to get back to your question, it's uh, all of these benefits really they. Uh, all, all of the new features here benefit both the HD guys and the non-HD guys, aside from the metering ballistics. Thank you very much, Tony. Yeah, my pleasure. Check out for more information. Go to uh, avid.com forward slash Pro Tools 11. Thanks for joining us.